Starting off this list at our number 10 spot, we have the RMS Republic. In 1981, researchers were on a dive when they came across the wreck of the RMS Republic. This ship was built in 1903 and it ended up being lost at sea in 1909. Since 1909, there were plenty of rumors that began swirling that said the ship may have been carrying a whole bunch of treasure. Like treasure that could perhaps be worth billions of dollars. One of the rumors was that the ship was carrying US gold coins that would have been worth a minimum of $250,000, but there's an even crazier rumor that the ship was carrying $3 million in coins as it was supposed to be a loan to Russia. Either way, this treasure has actually never been found as it certainly wasn't with the ship when the researchers came across it. Do you guys think that there was never any treasure or do you think that someone else found it first? In our number nine spot today, we have this ancient battle gear. Before I dive into this one, guys, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you're enjoying the video so far because it really helps us out. These artifacts were actually found recently after a dive in 2013. Just off the coast of Sicily, archeologists located what they believe may have been the site of the first naval battle. They found armor, weapons, helmets, and battering rams, and there were even able to date them back to around 2,000 years ago, which is so unbelievable. They believe that these artifacts are the remains of the Battle of the Agati Islands. This was when the Romans battled against the Carthaginians for over 20 years. It is believed that around 50 ships were sunk in this time, and that is how these remains ended up there for two millenniums. I don't know about you guys, but it's honestly crazy to think about that stuff still being around. In our number eight spot today, we have Dwarka. There was a time when the city of Dwarka was considered to be just a myth, so it came as quite a shock when researchers found the lost city 120 feet under the water. Testing done on the city remains has dated them back to 9,500 years ago, which could possibly place it even before the start of Egyptian and Chinese civilizations. This lost city consisted of six sectors that were each divided into residential and commercial areas. Apparently the great flood that happened 9,000 years ago is the cause for the city to end up submerged in the ocean. It's crazy that we can look back 9,000 years ago and know things like that. The name Dwarka translates from Sanskrit to mean gateway to heaven. With the city, researchers also found construction material, pottery, beads, sculptures, and even human bones and teeth. This city had many, many royal palaces that were all made with crystal and silver and had emeralds as decorations. In our number seven spot today, we have ancient medicine. Just off the coast of Tuscany, in 2013, researchers found the Relito del Pizzino, which was a shipping vessel that they were able to date back 2,000 years ago. Among the remains of the ship, they found some items that would help give them insights into what life was like for ancient Romans, and one of the most interesting items was ancient medicinal pills. Researchers believe that these pills were used as an eye medication. They contained zinc compounds, starch, iron oxide, beeswax, and some plant-based materials. This really helped give us more insights into what was considered medicine all the way back then, but I feel like there are many things we still don't know for sure. In our number six spot today, we have the Antikythera mechanism. I spoke about this crazy artifact in another one of my videos. In the very early 1900s, researchers found an ancient computer just off of a Greek island. This mechanism remains on display at the National Archaeological Museum of Athens because it is honestly unbelievable. This analog computer may have had had a ton of uses and researchers aren't 100% sure about all the ways it was used, but it is known to have been some sort of astronomical calculator. It was able to predict eclipses and different planetary placements. It was found 45 meters below the water in the wreck of a ship. This mechanism has been dated back to somewhere around 87 BC, and it is thought to have been created by a Greek scientist, but unfortunately after the creation of this ancient computer, the knowledge of this kind of technology was lost before it was found again. I truly wonder where we would be technologically if we had never lost that kind of information. In our number five spot today, we have Gondwana. This one is hard to think of as an artifact, but I most definitely think it applies for today's list. In 2011, National Geographic published an article where they said that pieces of Gondwana may have been discovered deep in the Indian Ocean. Gondwana is the ancient continent that used to exist when Australia, India, and Antarctica were all one landmass. Apparently, they found the presence of granite and sandstone, which is unusual to find on the seabed and is much more common to continents. There isn't a ton that is 
known about these microcontinents, but it truly is very mysterious and very fascinating. Since these pieces were from a time when dinosaurs still roamed the earth, they have even found fossils. In our number four spot today, we have these Stone Age artifacts. Swedish divers found artifacts that they believe may have been the remnants of Swedish people all the way back from the Stone Age. These artifacts were found in the Baltic Sea and are believed to be 11,000 years old. They were found 16 meters below the water and their findings consisted of animal horns, flint tools, wood, and ropes. It's crazy that researchers have the ability to date these kinds of things as far back as they have with these ones. Apparently they were also pretty well preserved when found, which is a whole other mystery to me. It may seem like a small find, but every artifact can help give us insight to what life on Earth was like all those years ago. In our number three spot today, we have the Bronze Age sewn boat. 2014 saw quite an interesting archeological discovery when the researcher Gilia Boeto revealed that they had discovered a Bronze Age sewn boat. This boat was found in a cove in Croatia and has been dated to have been wrecked in 1200 BC, which is unbelievable. The boat is made out of wood that is sewn together by ropes, roots, and willow branches. It is seven meters long and two and a half meters high, and considering the fact that it is 3,200 years old, it certainly has held up remarkably. This boat has given us at least a small glimpse into how boats were made all the way back then. Sometimes I hear about things that really leave me in awe of the things that have gone on on our earth. It's so unbelievably cool to think about. In our number two spot today, we have the Yonaguni Monument. Who would have thought that hammerhead sharks could lead to the discovery of an ancient artifact? Well, not exactly, but in the sea just off of Yonagani in Japan, there is a diving location that has a high population of hammerhead sharks, making it a large and popular attraction. In 1986, a diver in the area noticed some formation on the seabed that resembled a structure of some sort. This led to a team of scientists going on a dive to gather more information, and this is when the Yonaguni Monument was officially discovered. The monument is made out of sandstone and mudstone, but here's the mysterious thing. Scientists can't agree on its origins. There are some who believe that this is a natural formation, but there are some who swear that it is man-made. There are pretty reasonable arguments for both sides, and considering the fact that this thing is at least 10,000 years old, I guess it's fair to say that we may not have all the answers. In our number one spot today, we have Stardust. You guys, I truly don't even know what to make of this one. So apparently 2.7 million years ago, a star exploded and German researchers have now been able to locate pieces of it while they were drilling in the Pacific Ocean. I can't even believe that is a sentence that is true. This star was a type two supernova, which means that the star had to have at least eight times the mass of the sun and it also ejects iron 60 during the explosion. Somehow the star fragments ended up in the Pacific Ocean to be discovered in the remains of magnetic bacteria that were feasting on the iron from the star. Scientists believe it happened all that time ago because apparently iron 60 is way too young for Earth, whatever that means. Science is so crazy sometimes, you guys. Starting off this countdown, we have the HMS Sea Serpent. In August of 1848, the crew on the HMS Daedalus was sailing in the South Atlantic when they spotted this terrifying creature. According to the ship's captain and several members of the crew, they claimed that the monster was 60 feet in length, with four feet of his head raising out of the water. This massive sea beast lurked around the ship for 20 minutes before taking off. To this day, we don't know what it is that they saw. They described it as being a long snake with a dragon's head. Pretty weird and creepy, right? Well, they aren't the only ones who witnessed this too. It was spotted a second time by the American Brig Daphne. And in fact, crew on board even shot at it. Scientists claim that maybe they just saw a whale. But come on, a bunch of experienced sailors would know the difference between a whale and something that's not a whale. And at number nine today, we have the Mary Celeste. And if you guys are liking this video so far, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. To this day, the mysterious case of the Mary Celeste is considered one of the creepiest cases in nautical history. Basically, in 1872, the Mary Celeste was found abandoned in the middle of choppy waters. The crew was nowhere to be found. All the cargo on board remained untouched. Now, the lifeboats were missing, which makes people believe that the crew tried to get off the ship and flee. But why would they just abandon their ship like that? Well, we got a number of theories. One, a sea monster got them. Two, a pirate takeover occurred. 
3. They were abducted by aliens. Or 4. They consumed bad food and they all went mad. I know, it seems wild. To make matters weirder though, the crew and lifeboats were never found. No one knows what happened aboard that ship. In our 8th spot, we have the Baltic Sea Anomaly. In 2011, a group of divers went out looking for treasure in the Baltic Sea, and they came across something weird. It was a 70 meter long weird object laying 300 feet below sea level. This thing has since been named the Baltic Sea Anomaly, and no one knows what the heck it is. It's just this massive steel looking structure shaped like a disc with some weird patterns on it. it. Gets weirder when the divers claim their equipment randomly stopped working when they got closer to the object. There was a massive electrical interference there. So what is this thing? Honestly, we don't know. But some people think it's a glacial deposit left from thawing glaciers. Or it's part of a UFO spacecraft from one extreme to another. Could be either or, who knows. In our seventh spot, we have the three men. In 2007, three Australian men headed out on an expedition together. Three days later, their ship was found drifting by itself in the middle of the ocean. The men were nowhere to be found. That's not all. On the ship, they found knives all over the cabin floor, as if there had been a fight and people were scrambling for weapons. What happened to these men still remains a mystery to this day. But of course, we got the theories. One is that they got into a devastating fight and they all ended up dying. Or two, their propeller became snarled in a fishing line. One dude went to go free the line, but then fell into the ocean. The second dude tried to save him and then fell in as well, and then so on with the third guy, or who even knows. Okay, we don't know for sure, that's just a theory. The only thing we do know is that this case is pretty creepy. Moving on to number six, we have the Kraken. So it may just be that the Kraken is real. But it's not what we think it is. In fact, the legend of the Kraken was thought to have been born after a number of sailors spotted giant squids while sailing. So the Kraken might actually just be giant squids. In 1870, a giant squid washed up in New Zealand. Legend goes that it was as tall as the top of a ship's main mast. And it could easily take over a ship by wrapping its tentacles around the hull and crushing it. Is this true? Who knows? But no one believed that giant squids were real until around 2005. That's when scientists caught a photo of one. Then in 2013, they got a video of one. Now they believe there are millions of giant squids out there. The mystery here is, what beast did the sailors encounter in 1870? Was it a ginormous squid, or was it a kraken, or is a squid a kraken? Who even knows, okay? There's just so many questions out there that we need answers to. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the cursed shipwreck. Back in the early 2000s, a natural gas company was laying pipeline in the ocean when they came across a shipwreck. Nowadays, this shipwreck is considered cursed or haunted. Let me explain why. So after the shipwreck was discovered, a team was sent down there to check it out. But everything that could go wrong did. First, the exploration sub malfunctioned right as it was getting ready to explore the wreck. Then the Navy sent a research sub down there and it literally self-destructed upon entering the water. Then over the course of a couple of years, other attempts have been made to explore the ship, but those have gone wrong as well. None have been successful. So now it's believed that this ship is cursed and doesn't want anyone entering it. In our fourth spot, we have the disappearing submarines. In 1968, four different submarines all mysteriously went missing. As a result, people believe that this can no way just be a coincidence. Something was out there sinking these subs. The subs were the USS Scorpion, the Soviet submarine K-129, a French submarine Minerve, and the INS Dakar. In fact, the French sub and the INS Dakar disappeared only four days apart. The French submarine has still never been found. What's weird is that it disappeared only an hour away from its port. So you think they'd be able to track it down, but nope. So what are the odds that four massive submarines go missing the exact same year? What could have caused this? We'll probably never know. In our third spot, we have Sylvester Butler Jr. Apparently a number of people mysteriously vanish off of cruise ships each year. Most of them have never been found. Today, let's look at the weird case of Sylvester Butler Jr. In May of 2017, Sylvester boarded a cruise ship 
headed to the Pacific Islands. While on board though, the crew noticed he was acting weird. He kept to himself, barely talked to anyone else, and housekeeping claimed that he never unpacked his bags. The only charge on his bill was the occasional soft drink he would order to his room. Also, every time the crews made a stop, he never left the ship. Then somewhere between Fiji and the final port Sydney, crew noticed that he was missing. No one knows what happened to him. And the ship's CCTV footage revealed nothing. It's sad, but theory goes that Butler jumped off the ship and took his own life. Apparently he suffered from a chronic genetic kidney disease, so maybe he wanted to end his suffering. But we don't know for sure. On top of that, I believe that his body was never found. Coming in our second spot today, we have the Strongsay Beast. The Strongsay Beast is the name given to a massive carcass that washed ashore on Strongsay Island on September of 1808. At first, people thought it was just the body of a shark, but this creature had paws instead of fins. So then people were hella confused. Not only that, but it was 55 feet long. But part of its tail was missing, so clearly this thing was even bigger than that. This beast was described as follows, and I quote, its flesh was described as being like coarse, ill-colored beef, entirely covered with fat and tallow, and without the least resemblance or affinity to fish. The skin, which was gray colored and had an elastic texture, was said to be about two inches thick in parts." End quote. Not only that, but its bristles glowed in the dark when wet, and the contents in its stomach were red. So what is this beast? The Natural History Society of Edinburgh believes that it is a sea serpent of some sorts. Maybe the Loch Ness Monster or its long lost brother? Who knows? And in our number one spot today, we have the Oorang Madon. So this next mystery is pretty freaking creepy, I'm not gonna lie. It's gonna keep you up at night. So in 1947, two American ships received a distress call from the ship the Oorang Madon. The SOS call was from a crew member that stated everyone on board the ship had died. Then all of a sudden, his SOS ended with his last message being, I die. When the ships arrived, they found the ship completely unharmed. The entire crew, including a dog on board, had died. Everyone had a terrified look plastered on their face. No one knows what happened to the ship. Theory goes though that maybe they were exposed to some dangerous gas and died. That seems to be the most common theory out there. Starting off at number 10 now, we have the Ice Finger of Death. This footage was captured by the BBC off the coast of Antarctica. A creepy, twisting column of ice reaches down to the sea floor and then begins to spread out, killing every living thing it touches. You can see it here just wiping out a whole colony of unwitting crabs. It's caused by new sea ice forming at the surface of the water that is so salty it begins to sink and freeze. This is called a brine. Now at first, it baffled scientists and scared people who saw the footage, with some people calling it slow lightning, and wondering if larger versions could form that could actually threaten humans. For now though, scientists are continuing to unpick this fascinating mystery and study the ice fingers of death. Moving on to number 9 now, we have the Millennium Falcon. In June 2011, a scan of the ocean floor near Sweden and Finland revealed something very strange. It looked, and there's no other way to say this, like the Millennium Falcon spaceship from Star Wars. Don't believe me? Take a look for yourself. It was found at the bottom of the Baltic Sea and scientists were absolutely baffled. In the absence of any real answers, people just started coming up with their own theories, which ranged from a simple rock formation to a crashed UFO. Eventually, a team from Ocean X went down there to investigate. At first, they thought it was just a stone cliff, but as they approached it, they realized it was more in the shape of a giant mushroom with rounded sides and rugged edges. It had an egg shaped hole at the top as well as strange circle formations that looked like small fireplaces. They were even covered in something that looked like soot. The team concluded that it must be a natural formation, but they don't understand how it was formed, especially because no volcanic activity has ever been reported in the Baltic Sea. Do any of you have any good theories? Next up at number 8 now, we have the underwater pyramid. A few years ago, a huge anomaly was found off the west coast of Mexico. To many people, it looked like a pyramid, but deep underwater. 
Now, of course, this caused an explosion online among UFO enthusiasts who believed it to be an ancient relic of an alien civilization. It was first spotted by UFO enthusiast Marcelo Igazusta, who was using Google Earth to search for signs of global UFO activity. Now, to this day, you can still use his coordinates to go and see that feature on Google Earth. It's thought to be about 11 miles across, which would make it about 10 times the size of the Great Pyramid of Cholula, the largest known pyramid structure on the planet to date. The area is a hotbed of volcanic activity, and the feature may very well be a product of that, but this hasn't stopped the UFO enthusiasts searching for more answers. Moving on to number seven now, we have the underwater rivers. In Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula lies a very interesting phenomenon underwater rivers, and they look like this. But how exactly does this happen? Well, basically, when a limestone bedrock collapses, it sinks and forms a pit. This creates a reservoir that then fills up with a mixture of fresh and groundwater and salt water. Finally, when organic matter ends up in there and decomposes, it produces hydrogen sulfide, which separates the fresh water at the top from the seawater below. Now, all of this understanding is quite a recent thing. To the first divers that saw this, it simply looked like an underwater river. Next up at number 6 now, we have the Milky Sea. For centuries, sailors who have been out to the most distant parts of the ocean kept reporting a mysterious phenomenon all over the world, the Milky Sea. Miles and miles of pale, milky, glowing water. When they returned, many people didn't believe them, or thought they were just mistaken. But in the modern era, sailors are still reporting it. Finally, in 2005, a group of scientists led by Dr. Stephen Miller of the Naval Research Laboratory in Monterey, California, decided to investigate. They studied reported cases and found that on at least one occasion, there was a bioluminescent bacteria in the water known as Vibrio harvei. In order for them. Now, in order for them to cause the effects that have been described, they would have to congregate in massive numbers, and that is still very much a mystery. There are theories out there, but the Milk Sea story is not over yet. And I think that's really cool. Moving on to number five now, we have Pavlo Petri. This is an ancient Greek city, thought to be over 5,000 years old. In 1000 BC, an earthquake resulted in the entire city being swallowed up by the sea. The area never re emerged again, and so it has been relatively well preserved. Entire roads, houses, gardens, temples, and cemeteries are almost as they were the day they were flooded. In 2009, scientists used sonar mapping techniques developed by the the military to make Pavlo Petri the first submerged town to be digitally surveyed in 3D. Now, scientists have a big task ahead of them to figure out who these people were, what their lives were like, and where did they go when their homes sunk beneath the waves. Next up at number four now, we have the giant squid. For centuries, sailors told tales of the Kraken, an impossibly big squid-like creature that lived at the bottom of the ocean, only surfacing to smash up ships and drag sailors down to their watery graves. Although the Kraken has now fallen into folklore, a very real creature may have taken its place, the giant squid. It can grow up to 55 feet long and was never even photographed alive until 2004. Scientists know very little about this creature. They don't know its daily behavior patterns. They don't know whether it comes to the surface or remains deep at the bottom of the ocean all of the time. They don't know how fast it can swim, whether it uses its tentacles to catch prey. They don't even know what it eats or how long they live for. The giant squid may prove to be one of the last mysteries of the ocean, forever lurking below the depths of human knowledge. Moving on to number three now, we have the immortal jellyfish. Some humans search for immortality. One species may already have the answer to that. The scientific name for this jellyfish is Turritopsis dorni. Its nickname is the immortal jellyfish. Just like every other living thing, it ages, except when it comes to the point where it should start dying, the immortal jellyfish just says, nah. It then reverts back to its sexually immature stage, essentially becoming a child again. Their tentacles retract, their bodies shrink, and they sink to the ocean floor to start their whole cycle all over again. Now, scientists still aren't sure about how the jellyfish are able to do this. That's one reason to study them. Another is that if we find out how they're doing this, we could use it to fight old age diseases in humans, or maybe even figure out immortality for ourselves. Do you think that's a good idea, though? At the number two spot now, we have the purple orb. In 20 
2016, the team operating the exploration vessel Nautilus came across a strange purple orb on the ocean floor off the coast of California, and it appeared to be alive. The scientists were stumped. They had never seen anything like it before. They joked about it being a spider egg sac or a tiny mama octopus. They even nicknamed it Blobus Purpleus, and they weren't the only ones who were interested in it. A crab was there too. The crab was just knocking this purple blob around, and the team had to basically prize it from its claws to retrieve it. After taking it back to a lab to study, scientists were very puzzled as to what exactly it was. After analyzing it though, they believed it to be a variant of a sea slug. A purple orb sea slug. And finally number one now we have the bloop. In 1997 the bloop sound was heard deep underwater in the Pacific by multiple listening stations that were thousands of miles apart. Take a listen to the famous bloop. What was that? It was a total mystery. What made the bloop sound? Theories started to arise. Many believed that it was made by a massive unknown animal that had been awoken at the bottom of the ocean, but what could make a noise that loud? After studying the noise, NOAA, the research group, had determined that the noise wasn't made by an animal, but rather a natural event instead. They believed that it was the cracking of an ice shelf breaking up in Antarctica that sent sound waves right through the Pacific. Now, of course, even to this day, Day, there's a hardcore group of people that still believe the bloop was definitely animal made. Starting us off at number 10 is the death sign. I feel like the title of this one shouldn't be enough to warrant it as scary, but expand on it, we must. Eagle's Nest Sinkhole qualifies as one of Florida's most treacherous underwater caves, if not the most dangerous. It's a deadly diving location and it's famous for its mermaid shows, which really just means it has a bunch of lightless pockets and nooks and crannies that house a a lot of rare translucent marine life. Right before the entrance of this sinkhole, there's a massive death sign. I kid you not, it says stop, prevent your death, go no further. It has the Grim Reaper on the left of it, because obviously we have to add insult to injury when you're down there. And under the title, it has four facts, mostly about you dying. For example, more than 300 divers, including instructors, have died in caves like this one. Without cave training and cave equipment, divers can die here. It can happen to you. And my personal favourite cherry on top is there's nothing in this cave worth dying for. And I mean, they're not wrong. Some of the tunnels under there plunge 300 feet deep, so much so that people have described it as a Venus flytrap. You get in and quickly get distracted by everything around you and you don't even realise how deep it gets and how quickly it does so. Zero to 100 real quick. It's even been dubbed the Mount Everest of cave dives. Say no more dude say no more. You're not going to find me anywhere near that. No, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, coming in at number nine is the sinkhole. Now, I've seen so many pictures of people literally diving into an endless black hole in the ocean, and I don't know how they do it. It's a black hole that, for all you know, could be hiding the last megalodon in there just waiting to pounce and eat you. I don't even get how people just free dive in there. Like, what if you don't have enough oxygen and energy to get all the way back to the surface? You're dead, mate. It's just too dark. It's too deep, it's too filled with unknowns, and frankly, it's just freaking dangerous. I think something Friedrich Nietzsche said really applies to this one. He said, if you gaze long enough into an abyss, the abyss will gaze back into you. And I fully believe that. This picture, like I know something is staring back at this girl ready to eat her alive. Like, need I remind you guys, less than 5% of the ocean has been explored. The other 95% is ready right under her to eat her up. At number eight, we have the Devil Serpent. And yes, that is definitely not the creature's name, but when you look at it, that's really all that comes to mind. This snake dinosaur looking thing is in fact a moray eel, but even the website I saw this picture on titled it the malevolent moray eel. Like that's not a compliment to me at all. These deep water eels are found in the South Pacific Ocean and honestly they look like a dinosaur snake eel hybrid mutation. These little sh are carnivorous, they eat basically anything smaller than them, and their main predators are barracudas and sea snakes, so it's safe to say moray eels are apex predators in their own ecosystems. They have short serrated teeth, whereas others have fang-esque teeth. Imagine they were found in shallower waters and you went diving and this eel just burst out of some coral tunnel on your left or mouth open creeping at you. I honestly can't, like I think that'd be the first time I'd ever defecate underwater and the last time because this thing would kill me. Filling 
our number seven slot is Christ. Yes, they actually found Jesus Christ down there in the deep sea. Surprise, surprise. No, no, obviously they didn't. This picture was taken off the coast of Key Largo, Florida, and it's one of three bronze statues of Christ that are submerged. The first one was submerged off the coast of Italy back in 1954. There's another near Granada, and finally this one that was erected in 1965. The statues were put there for many reasons. Firstly, to represent Christ in the new world. Secondly, as a memorial for those who had died at sea, and thirdly, for those who continue to explore the depths. But how haunting is this photo? Like, I don't mean that in a disrespectful way at all before you guys come at me like Antichrist. It is a haunting image. Like, this giant Christ covered in water damage and plants just looking upwards. I mean, it's called the Christ of the Abyss, for God's sake. Like, it's just, it's haunting. It's, it's it gives me the feeling like he drowned even though I know he was put there. But just the thought of scuba diving deeper and deeper into dark water and seeing this drowned figure with his arms outstretched in the middle of open water just makes my skin crawl a little bit. It could be just me though, but I'm pretty sure it's not. Now at number six is the fish from hell. I mean its actual name is the black dragon fish, but I reckon my moniker fits it a lot better. This picture literally looks like this fish demon of death emerged from the parts of the ocean that are so deep they're actually in hell. Apparently the black dragon fish has light emitting organs all along its belly to trick predators since the light changes its silhouette. It even has bioluminescent lights next to each eye that either attracts mates or helps find prey. Believe me, they're not finding any mates looking like that, I can assure you. Now the thing has a few rows of razor sharp teeth, not to mention the thing has teeth on its bloody tongue. Like. Why was there a need for that? There really wasn't. Like God was just like, you know, this creature already looks like the spawn of Satan. What else can I add for, you know, just like a touch of panache? A toothed tongue? A teethed tongue. I rest my case. Let's keep fish well deep under the sea, shall we? Coming in at number five is the chair. Honestly, this image is haunting like all the other ones on this list. I feel like deep in the sea you expect to find horrifically ugly animals or the remains of old shipwrecks. Rarely do you expect to find a random inanimate object like a kid's chair. The chair in the photo is tiny, it's yellow, and it's scaring me. I'm wondering if I even want to know how it got there or what happened to make it get there. Was a young child thrown off the side of a yacht? or cruise on their little chair? Did a family yacht ride go awry and sink and the chair is one of the only surviving items from the tragedy? It's just giving me major ghost ship vibes and I'm not here for it. I'm not here for it. No. At number four is Zemcha Canyon. Bro, I know we had deep canyons underwater, but this is like the daddy of canyons. Located in the middle of the Bering Sea, the Sumbarine Canyon is the deepest canyon in the world and is also tied for the widest one as well. At a vertical relief of 8,530 feet, it's deeper than the Grand Canyon by more than 2,400 feet. Like if you just look at this thing from an aerial view of the earth, it's like blue sea, land, and then just a massive cliff drop into a dark blue blue vortex. It's nearly 9,000 feet deep and we've only explored 2,000 feet of it. Lol, we're a joke. Stats like that just make me feel like humans are just so puny and fragile and just so breakable and useless. Just a picture of this little submarine going into the canyon. Like no light goes down there, it's just this eerie white torch of the vehicle illuminating parts of the ocean that have just never been touched. What is down there? Will we ever know? I definitely hope so, but I'm a bit scared to see what we find. Is my ex down there? Let me know. <laughs> Filling our number three slot is the Goblin Shark, or we can call it by its Latin name, the ugliest shark I've ever seen. This thing looks like a living corpse. I've never seen the need for something so horrific to exist until now. The living fossil is 125 million years old and is found in the deep sea. I mean, of course it is, otherwise it wouldn't be on this list. I think the unsettling part of it is the fact that Goblin Shark's skin is semi-transparent, so the pinkish hue on them is really just a direct look at their insides, which I don't want want or need. Secondly, they have these elongated snouts and needle-like teeth, but the worst of the worst are definitely their jaws. They're highly extendable so it can just be swimming around and just detach its jaw and eat something a few feet in front of it, and then its jaw goes back to its original place like nothing even happened. Even when they're not coming outwards, they still look barely attached to the body of the shark, which is just its not a nice sight. They're found in depths that basically have no light, and I don't really think this creature needs to see the light, so I feel like we can just happily coexist and never see one another. It's a deal. 
Now at number two is the Titanic. I feel like it was expected that this was going to be on the list, but honestly, I feel like I'd be doing a disservice if I host any ocean video and I don't include the Titanic. This event doesn't need any introduction, and if you don't know what happened with the Titanic, then I don't think you even deserve to know. So there's that. But now I'm about to tell you. In 1912, the Titanic hit an iceberg on its maiden voyage and sank, killing at least 1,500 people. The ship split into two and sank 12,415 feet below the surface, and the the wreckage was only found in 1985. Water pressure at that depth is freaking lethal, and on top of that, the site is just ghostly. I feel like because we had so much information about the Titanic before it sunk, that seeing the pictures of the wreckage just make you imagine in detail what would have been going on on the deck, who would have been living where, where the last song the band played was, just everything. The pictures just ooze its final moments, and honestly, I feel like it's haunted. I know I'll never know, but so many people died in this one event and drowned in and around the same area, I would honestly not be surprised for a second if their spirits and souls were trapped in the deepest parts of the ocean with the wreckage itself. That could honestly be a great idea for a gothic horror novel now that I think about it. I want to copyright that if possible, live, right now. <laughs> Finally, at number one is the Pacific Viperfish. You know when you're playing a fighting game and you get to the last level and you have to fight the final boss? That's what the Pacific Viperfish is. We've reached our final boss, people. This fish is in the abyss, abyss of the deep sea, and during the day it can be anywhere between 200 to 5,000 meters below the ocean surface, and at night it comes up a bit more for food, but for the most part, they're down pretty deep. Looks wise, they're only about one foot long, and they are ugly mofos. Ones I wouldn't want to encounter during the day, during the night, during my lifetime, thank you. They have huge mouths and fang-like teeth and are this iridescent dark blue silver color usually, but can be light black as well. Their teeth are transparent, which is just weird first of all and just creepy, but they also don't fit in the fish's mouth because of how big they are. So they just curl back on the outside, which obviously makes it look even more scary and monstrous. And you just, you just don't want to see it. You don't want to see it. <laughs> 